So let's consider something moving in a magnetic field at an angle to the magnetic field. So up to this point, we, for example, have had like a magnetic field, you know, like this. We had something moving perpendicular to it and then going around in circles. Okay, so cyclotron motion. Now let's say that we've got a magnetic field, okay, and the magnetic field is like this. So the magnetic field is directed to the right. It has a magnitude about 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5th Tesla. Okay, so this is roughly the strength of the magnetic field in space, the Earth's magnetic field in space outside the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, and let's say we have a proton moving in here. So we have a proton, so this is a proton, moving with a velocity that is 55 degrees with respect to the magnetic field. And so let's say the proton, the magnitude, that velocity is going to be 4.31 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. So I want to, I want to describe that motion. All right, so if you look at this, and imagine you're looking at it from that direction. So here you are looking at it. And so the magnetic field is going away from you, and you have a proton moving here. So the proton is going to be going around like that. Well, look at the velocity there. So we've got the velocity here, magnetic field and velocity. So you get a magnetic field, we've got the velocity. The only part of the velocity that matters is the part that's perpendicular. So the velocity perpendicular is going to be equal to V sine of the angle. Okay, so it's going to be it's going to be cyclotron motion, but we know that the cyclotron radius mv over qb we derive that assuming that V was perpendicular. So now it's going to be MV sine theta QB. So it's only the perpendicular component of that velocity that matters. Okay. So now we can plug in the numbers. So that's going to be the mass of the proton. So it's a proton. So that's 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, times the velocity, which is 4.31, times 10 to the fifth meters per second, times sine 55 degrees, divided by 1.602, times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, times the magnetic field, 1.5, times 10 to the minus fifth tesla, and that comes out to be 246 meters. So, it's going this way, and it's making loops. That's 246 meters in radius. So that means it has, a it has roughly half a kilometer of diameter loop. But every time it makes a loop, it's also moving this way. So what's happening is it's spiraling. So I want to know now what is the distance of that spiral? What's the spacing between the spiral? Okay. So, well, it goes some distance x. It's going to be the velocity, the x velocity times the time. Okay. So the x velocity is going to be v cosine theta. Okay. So remember, we had the magnetic field. Okay, we had the V, so theta, so V cosine theta is that, that velocity right there. Now what's T going to be? T is going to be equal to the cyclotron, period. The time it makes to, takes to be one complete circuit. Because that's, you know, it's here, it makes one complete circuit, but in the meantime, it's moved over to there. Okay, so we need the cyclotron period. Cyclotron period, uh, we know, is 2 pi m over qb.
All right, so the cyclotron period is going to be 2 pi times 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms times the, uh, uh, well, actually, no times, divided by 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5th tesla. And so that turns out to be 4.32 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds, so 4.32 milliseconds. And so the x, the distance between the, the loops in the spiral, is going to be equal to v cos and theta times time. So that's going to be uh, 4.31 times 10 to the fifth meters per second, cosine 55 degrees, 4.32 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. So that comes out to be uh, 1,070 meters. So magnetic field is this way. Motion is that way. And so it's going to be making these big loops here in which the diameter of the loop, the diameter of the loop is 2R. So that's going to be uh, uh, 200, uh, rather, rather it's going to be uh, 590, that's, that's, that's going to be, uh, sorry, sorry, 400, and 92 meters, so almost half a kilometer. And the spacing here is going to be about one kilometer, so 1,070 meters. So, now, what happens is on Earth's magnetic field, Earth's magnetic field, so this is Earth right here, actually a big bar magnet in here. And so what happens is these particles are moving along here, and then where they reach the end of the magnetic field, then it, the, 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 the direction is changing, and it actually forces them to loop back. And so they go back and forth, back and forth, all these particles trapped in this magnetic field. It makes these big zones around the Earth here that if, if you have an astronaut passing through it, they get bombarded by these high-energy particles. This was first discovered by Erwin Van Allen. We call them the Van Allen radiation belts. Sometimes you get too much stuff in here and disrupt the magnetic field a little bit. These particles can slam into the atmosphere, knock electrons loose uh, near the north and south ma uh, geomagnetic poles. And so at that point, you get the aurora. Okay. This is also uh, what we do when we try to confine antimatter. Antimatter uh, uh, particles that are like protons, except they're positively charged, or like, electro, uh, like electrons, except they're positive charged. They're like protons, except they're negatively charged, or they're like electrons, except positively charged. And if they bump into ordinary matter, they annihilate each other. So we can create this in the laboratory, but the problem is you can't put it in a bottle because it bumps into matter and annihilates. So what we do is we put it in a magnetic bottle. So we create a magnetic field here and the magnetic field is kind of like this and so what happens is these particles are spiraling back and forth in here and where the magnetic field bunches up they tend to turn around and go back and forth and so we're trapping them in this magnetic bottle so these are several different applications here of this idea and again as they're moving in here if they're moving parallel to the magnetic field there's no force on them if they're moving perpendicular to the magnetic field, cyclotron motion, so if they're moving at an angle, they make these spirals back and forth.